Hello. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. This beautiful Sunday morning. It was quite cold this morning at 30-some degrees. Uh, <laughs> we bundled up and went out. It wasn't too bad because the wind wasn't too, was like one mile an hour. So that always is pleasant when it's cold out. Okay, let's get started. I've got a couple things here I want to share with you. One is a short message that was posted on Grafted in Team Jesus, and she sent us a, a link in our mailbox, uh, emails so that we could share it or just have it, whatever. So I'm, And I'm going to share it with you. And also, somebody emailed me something they thought would be uplifting for us all, and that is Psalm 33. So I pulled it up in Blue Letter Bible so I could make the font nice and big so I wouldn't have to lean in like this to read it to you. <laughs> so anyway, let's get started. All right, this is uh, called Stand Strong was the title of this little message. I say little because it's short. By Judy, or given to Judy Reynolds. Let's put it that way. November the 6th. Now today is November the 7th. It is now 9.32 a.m. My body feels like it's 10.32. Did y'all turn your clocks back last night? <laughs> Boy, it was like time to get up, and it was uh, on the clock nearly 7.30, or it was about 7. I think I woke up early before it went off, but, of course, all the, the digital clocks were 6. <laughs> I had to go around setting all the clocks to 6 o'clock or whatever time I got around to doing it. 6.20, I think it was. I set them back to 6.20. Anyway, here we go. Here's the message received by Judy Reynolds on November 6th at 1.13 p.m. I received this word from our Lord between 5 and 6 this morning, November 6th, 2021. After he spoke it out twice to me, very emphatic, he said, Tell this to all your holy brethren. Stand strong, my people. Stand strong. Do not waver. Do not doubt. I am coming for you. Notice it is addressed to his holy brethren. And it's signed, the Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified one. Amen. And then Judy put her name under that. So very short. And I'm going to capture this picture right here. Because I like it. It's the one Kathy chose to use. And I'm going to use it too. Someone's standing strong with their arms raised up like they're praising the Lord. All right. Let's save that. Okay, now we can close out of this. And I'm going to read to you Psalm 33. Praise to the Creator and Preserver. Sing for joy in the Lord, O you righteous ones. Excuse me a second. Cold weather kind of makes... Well, I was probably got a little bit of runny nose because I was listening to some songs. And they just made me cry. I don't know why. Sometimes I get emotional when I'm praising the Lord. And that is now, since I've come off of Effexor or the antidepressant. Before that, I was not shedding a tear, not during prayer, not ever. And I thought, this is just not right. I used to cry all the time when I prayed or worshipped. Just because it's, you should feel that connected. Okay, anyway, let's go back to this. Psalm 33, verse 1. Sing for joy in the Lord, O you righteous ones. Praise is becoming to the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre, L-Y-R-E. Sing praises to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. 
By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the breath, I hope I don't have blueberry on my mouth. <laughs> Sorry if I do. I don't think so. I think I wiped my mouth good. <laughs> Let me start over on verse 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Hmm. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Amen to that. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord nullifies the counsel of the nations. Don't you love that? That goes along with Psalm 2. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. Yeah, like the Illuminati trying to blow up or break apart La Palma. It will happen, but not until Jesus and Father say it's time. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From his dwelling place he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, he who understands all their works, the king is not saved by a mighty army. A warrior is not delivered by a great strength. A horse is a false hope for victory, nor does it deliver anyone by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. That's a healthy fear. Realizing that he has total and complete control. He will take care of you if you let him. If you put your life in his hands. Not looking to man or his medicine or his money or his sermons to lead you, teach you, guide you, save you, heal you, etc., etc. You get that? Okay. So behold, I, the Lord, is on those who fear him, on those who hope for his loving kindness to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart rejoices in him. Because we trust in his holy name. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. According as we have hoped in you. I love that psalm. I hadn't read it in quite a long time. So I hope that blessed your heart. So let me bring up my camera and say, remember that Psalm 33, if you want to pull it up on in your Bible or your Bible app, however you do, and you want to study it further. But I think it, it made a point. It made several points. That part about the Lord bringing up the water in a heap. Doesn't that sound kind of like the Lord's going to make the tsunami? He's going to allow it or cause it to happen. It'll go exactly where he wants it to go. And as far inland as he wants it to go and no further. It'll be as high as he wants it to be and no higher. Nor no lower. You see, he's in total control. He will only allow what is his will to be done. All right.
With this I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us, with the, over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections, so we can stay connected until we're out of here and get to meet in person, have a hug fest, meet Jesus. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. And then come back and really make a difference. Big, big time. Because Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. And I look forward to that. And then spending eternity with Jesus and Father going from earth to heaven, heaven to earth, and back and forth in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be, be able to teleport, transport, fly, whatever we want. That's right. That part we can imagine about and be joyful knowing. But remember this, as I was reminded last night, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. I mean, no, no eye has seen nor ear heard nor can our minds conceive the wonderful and glorious things the Lord has prepared for those who love him. And that means love, serve, obey, commit, etc. All right then. Bye for now. I'll close it off. I'll talk to you later. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody, or whenever you happen to see this. A glorious night, glorious morning. Bye-bye for now. Be blessed in Jesus' name.